In this video, we're going to look at an IoT, or Internet of Things, solution using a web app via the Raspberry Pi. Now, the first thing that we want to do in order to implement this solution is enable remote debugging by going to the Raspberry Pi and running the script for the B4J bridge. Showing you the Pi Face BNC connection that I have. This is the bridge shell connection uh, to run the uh, B4J bridge. Take note, of course, as we went over in the debugging video of your IP address. Then go to your integrated development environment. If you'll note, the B4 bridge is disconnected. So we need to go to Tools, B4J Bridge, Connect, and the IP address of the remote machine, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi. And now you'll note the B4J bridge is connected. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and run this application in debug mode, and you'll note it compiling. As soon as it's done compiling, the IDE comes up in debug mode. We can switch over to Safari, and I've already created a shortcut to the PyFace server example. And now what we're going to do is show you the different things that we're, we're actually interfacing the PyFace connected to the Raspberry Pi mainboard to a web app. If you'll notice, as these switches are being pushed, switch 0, 1, 2, 3 are going from false to true. And now, the other direction, as we click off to on on the LED switches within the web interface, the LEDs come on on the Pi face. So this is showing you the bidirectional nature of a web app interfaced with the Raspberry Pi. And this example can be extended to just about anything you can imagine. Showing you how you can push multiple buttons at the same time. Also at the same time, different LEDs are set to on or off. Now we're going to go ahead and turn everything off. And now let's go ahead and look at some of the code. And now we're back at the IDE, and let's take a look at some of the code behind the scenes in this application. As you'll note over here from one of the earlier videos, we have our libraries selection. Of course, the uh, JCore library is always required. The JPy4J library is required to interface with the Pi face. And the JServer library is for is a uh, interface that is required by the WebSocket module. Now, going back to our main module, subprocess globals, we have our declarations for the server, for the Pi face itself, and for the connections themselves. In the app start subroutine, we have to initialize the Pi face itself, basically turn it on and tell it to do um, to get ready to be interfaced with. Right after that, we go ahead and set up some listeners, which basically means listen for the state of those four switches that we can push, 0, 1, 2, and 3. We initialize our server. We initialize our port and add a WebSocket. Once again, the WebSocket module is here. And we start the server. Down here, we have the monitoring of our switch states switch 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now let's go over to the class module, WebSocket module. And if you'll notice that here, when the WebSocket is connected, switches will be monitored. Get element by ID, button 0, 1, 2, 3, monitoring the four switches on the Raspberry Pi itself. Here, we prepare the toggle buttons and set their state. We have 0 through 7, which is actually LEDs 1 through 8. Remember that when you're talking about an array, you start at 0 and go through one number preceding the last number of the, of the items that you have. Now, if some of this seems confusing at first, it's normal. If you're a new developer, this may look like Greek to you, but don't let it be. 
the best advice that any developer can give you is to download samples and applications that others have written, save the original copy, and then play, play, play. Kick the tires, change the code, you're not going to hurt anything. The only way to learn development is to actually develop. And another bit of advice is to go to the B4J documentation online on the B4X website and please utilize the abundance of help that's available on the Anywhere Software B4J uh, forums, both the tutorials and questions. Um, if you'll notice here, we're working with the Raspberry Pi, so let's take a look at the J Pi 4J library. The list of types is listed here. If you want to find information about, let's say, the LEDs, Here's the LED. The members within the LED is initialized as Boolean, which basically means on or off. Its state is initialized as Boolean and state. And if you'll note here, there's even a uh, explanation that says gets or sets the LED state. True is on and false is off. So this information that you have within the documentation coupled with playing in the B4J integrated development environment will enable you to learn how to develop. Once again, the only way to learn how to develop is to actually develop. You need to play with the software. You need to uh, play with what others have done, uh, not create something from scratch, not reinvent the wheel. And when you come up with something that, hasn't, uh, that you couldn't find, Share that with the community so that someone else can learn from what you've developed also.